outside of immunotherapy, right? So we have to remember that you know, 80 to 90 percent of patients aren't going to respond to immunotherapy. So what else do we have for these folks? You know, the Claudin. Tell us about Claudin. Uh, the Claudin? Claudin. Okay, the Claudin yes. 18.2. Claudin. Claudin. <laughs> well, I call it Claudin. Okay, Claudin 18.2, which is, uh, you know, the Claudins are, are involved in the, the kind of adhesion uh, of the cells, and certainly it was highlighted uh, as one of the important molecular events by the, uh, by the TCGA. Uh, gastric uh, uh, for the gastric cancer, so um, there is now an antibody uh, targeted against Claudine 18.2, uh, and it was tested in a randomized phase two um, uh, setting where they were uh, the the control arm being EOX, so they did use aperuvirin, oxaliplatin, and gabapentin, with or without this uh, monoclonal antibody, uh, and in that study. Uh, they did see a uh, progression-free survival and overall survival um, benefit. But we also know that this Claudine 18.2 seems to be associated with diffuse histology. Uh, although in that particular study, which is called FAST, they have not actually reported the, um, the, uh, the relative proportion of diffuse versus intestinal histology. Uh, so we don't know whether that is definitely, you know, uh, in clinically um, uh, more diffuse histology in that. But certainly that is a uh, interesting uh, randomized phase two data, uh, but it will require confirmatory large phase three uh, which I think is in planning. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see when that study uh, opens up and then see, see, you know, what we get. Very good. And, and certainly, as Yelena alluded to earlier, the importance of some of the molecular profiling, because we saw some early data at, at this year's ASCO about targeting a very rare um, abnormality, which is an FGFR abnormality, whether it be a translocation with FGFR2B for gastric cancers, and I think those studies continue to go. Um, looking at things like attacking the, the stem cells with STAT3 inhibitors are going on in combination with chemotherapy. And I'm going to toss this last one to mm -hmm. my friend here. Tell us about an MMP9 inhibitor. An MMP9 inhibitor. So that's another exciting drug. It's it's um, andaliximab, um, and it is a monoclonal antibody that targets MMP9, which is a matrix metalloproteinase. It's actually um, an enzyme that helps sort of break up the immune microenvironment. Um, and there was a expanded cohort phase one study that showed some very encouraging results, and that has led to a phase three study that has also completed accrual. And so we will, um, we'll, we eagerly await the results of that study, hopefully in the next year. Excellent. So before we end this discussion, I want to ask each of you if you've got any additional comments, take home messages for the audience here about what we've just discussed. So I'm going to start easy with our newcomer, who I hope will be a long-term comer. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us what any, any closing thoughts? Okay. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to join this very uh, exciting uh, discussion. Uh, we, uh, I learned many things from uh, investigators from other countries, especially we have uh, some difference between gastric in Japan and other countries. But if you focus on usual type of gastric cancer, I think there's no uh, large difference in terms of genomic profile or immunological profile because we have uh, also similar uh, frequency of uh, EB virus, MSR, or other FG4 or MAT. There's no clear uh, difference in terms of frequency. And uh, if we focus on the response rate to anti pd one therapy, as mentioned before, there seems to be no major difference. So that means we have more global collaboration. Uh, maybe we have not enough time to discuss more new drug, but we have uh, many candidate new drug. So to do a phase three trial in one country for each drug is very difficult or impossible. So we uh, efficiently do such kind of collaboration to uh, develop newer, a good drug for gastric cancer. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Elena. I absolutely agree. It's, you know, we are realizing and we're really on the cusp of solidifying it on phenotyp, so, you know, the clinically relevant way that gastric cancer is not one disease. It's at least four, maybe five different molecularly driven diseases. And um, these uh, small subsets of patients are very difficult to study um, if we don't come together and make sure to enroll 
uh, patients into clinical trials, not really just treat them anecdotally and then never report the data. You know, it's uh, and uh, and really make uh, the genomic the response data. Uh, Public, public, you know, MSK is doing a Genie project where we are um, making available uh, the clinical annotation and response data in addition to the um, the sequencing analysis that we do. And right now, I'm in the process of actually publishing our consecutive um, set of uh, 500 patients that we sequenced in gastric cancer or patient samples. And it's an important uh, effort to share this. Um, uh, data across the globe and to do plan the next studies together. Dr. Chow. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think it really, t today's session really highlights that we need, you know, collaborations at, at all levels, you know, in the, uh, at the institution, in the localized disease, collaborating with, you know, all our, our, our multidisciplinary team of our surgeons, radiologists, radiation oncologists, and then, you know, later, you know, collaborate with our scientists, uh, you know, with, with just getting the molecular uh, analysis and then try to incorporate that into our uh, clinical study and then when we move on to do clinical trials collaborate you know internationally nationally internationally so that we can actually move some of these new treatment you know quicker and earlier to our patients benefit Excellent. and dr. Shaw anchorman <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know I, I guess I'd first like to thank you Joanna for moderating such a great uh, discussion <laughs> Um, I've learned a lot from my colleagues, and I'll slip you a twenty after. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and and uh, you know, obviously, collaboration is an important thing. But I, I think actually, over the last few years, what I've really come to appreciate is that this is a quickly evolving field, and we will have new drugs, new uh, treatment options for our patients, and we'll need to be smart about how to sequence them. How about that for segue? I love it. I love it. <laughs> sequencing, sequencing, sequencing. Well, I mean, I'm really excited because it feels like gastrointestinal cancers are making a comeback, right? We sort of went through a little bit of a dark spell there where we didn't have a lot. There was a dark spell? Dark spell. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> but but now we're, I think we're emerging back up with so many new potential treatment options, the immunotherapies, combinations of immunotherapies, new targets, new ways to think about how to treat local advanced disease, much through collaboration. And I think what I love about this overall theme and the overall theme of everybody's comments was the importance, especially in this day in the world, I'm making a political comment, the importance that we're all seeing of coming together and collaborating globally to change the lives of patients throughout the world. So how's that for, for erudite thoughts at the end of this discussion, but, <laughs> but really, really mean them. Um, this was a great discussion, and thank you on behalf of our panel, and we thank you for joining us.